Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whatever time it is, I hope you are having a good one. Welcome back to House Flipper 2 with Rash Decision. If you enjoy this type of content, please leave me a like, subscribe, and maybe even a comment to let me know. Enjoy the video. Alright, we're back for another Mod Review Monday. And today we have this one, the Hedera House. I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and I do apologize if I am mispronouncing it, uh, but it is by Midas. Uh, this one actually came up pretty much last second. Uh, came up on the 20th, which means it would have been uh, yesterday, Saturday, uh, when, we're, when we're watching this, when I'm uploading, uh, creating, the, I should say, creating and uploading this on Sunday. So this would have been yesterday. This was uh, first put onto the uh, mod hub and as you know I always go Sunday through Saturday as the limits of what I'm doing for a particular week so uh, this would have been done yesterday so it was right there last second in order to get put in here and this one I came across a few different ones that I wanted to uh, talk about but actually I like this one the most even though it's a modern and I don't really do modern that much um, this one caught my attention, and I know that I've noticed there's a lot of modern on the mod hub, and I think that's because modern has a lot more relevant examples in pop culture than a lot of the other styles, and also a lot of the other styles are going by the wayside because more modern building techniques uh, don't support older traditional style building anymore. Uh, but I can get into that later. So, this one. Looks like it's fairly large, 1,500 square feet. Uh, it looks like it's uh, decently thin, so it's fairly narrow. Um, we'll have a look at it a little bit more in detail here in just a moment. Uh, but it does look like it has a fairly solid design. Like I could see uh, uh, like the, the joists going across to support the second story, and they're just out there exposed. And I see it right up here going the other direction to uh, support the roof. Um, really interesting design right there uh flat roof buildings always make me nervous personally but as long as they're designed correctly usually there's not a problem with them it's uh i've worked with a few in the real world i've actually worked with a few of uh, uh flat roofs with my grandfather that didn't work out too well had one that leaked constantly we completely resealed everything on it and it still leaked uh I've always, they've always left a bad taste in my mouth. And they, they if they're designed incorrectly from the ver from the get go, it doesn't matter how good of a repairman comes in and tries to do their work, it's never gonna come out. But anyway, let's go ahead and get in, have a look at this one. Again, it's a Hedera house by Midas. Let's go and we're gonna have a play. I think this one doesn't have a job associated with it. And I feel really terrible because I keep picking the ones that don't have jobs. Um, but it's perfectly fine. Just doing tours of like the houses like this please me just as much as everything else. So I guess it's not really too big, a, uh, too big of a deal. So it looks like they've just kind of cordoned this off and just left this as empty space. And I kind of understand where they're coming from with this, especially with like the rounded sidewalk and everything. Uh, they wanted this to be more like uh, this is everything inside, uh, just like a self-contained pocket dimension just about. Uh, but the fact they put it in... Uh, coral, coral root forest. That was actually one thing I noticed that's in coral root forest. So you have like all the trees around it and everything, all the natural beauty. But this feels like something that probably should have gone into Pinnacove. I'm just going to put that out there. That's not really anything anybody's done wrong. It's just, it feels strange. Also, uh, just coming up, I saw this in like the pictures. These, uh, these windows are very intricate. I almost wanted to say something poor about them, but I can't find anything poor to say about them. They're just very intricate. I'm not overly certain that I like them or dislike them, really. But it definitely seems like uh, there was a lot of effort put into making sure that the top and the bottom floor windows kind of flowed into each other. Like this is all very, very geometric, but uh, geometric shapes can still have a flow to them and they've accomplished it here. This is an excellent example of that. So you have like the brickwork out here, this like just standard stacked block. It's not even staggered, just stacked uh, grid block. It's just in slate gray, but it works really well because all of this is just on these wonderful little 90 degree angles from everything else. And, uh, yeah, it's almost like a labyrinthian, uh, it's like it's drawing you a map. 
And it wants your eyes to follow specific angles and directions. So coming around here, I, I once again, I have to point out, there's a lot of natural beauty that's been uh, etched into the area surrounding this house, which acts as a wonderful little dichotomy. There's a juxtaposition between the chaos of natural bushes and leaves, trees, and this geometricity just jutting out of the ground like an obelisk. It has like all this color, especially like the chairs here has this like deep natural mahogany like wood or like a stained oak or maybe like a pine, something along those lines. And it has like these uh, bright purple cushions. Look very comfortable by the way with the quilted, I, I will say that. And of course you have like the blue, this nice deep cerulean blue coming in from the the uh, the, I started to say the pond, it's a concrete pond. Let's go Beverly Hillbilly style. Yeah, we got it in from the concrete pond here. No, it's a pool. Coming in from the pool here, this wonderful blue, which I can tell what they've done to artificially increase how blue the pool is, is they've got this, um, uh, looks like just stonework. Uh, just one of the stonework um, uh, textures coming along the bottom of the pool, and they just have it dyed blue. And of course, they have like the lights all the way through it that kind of uh, add to the effect because they're reflecting all of that blue back into the water. And then, of course, the water itself is a little bit blue uh, on its own, so it makes it look extremely blue when you look at it like this. And you have like the wonderful uh, reflections coming off of all the green, just kind of adding that little bit of natural color uh, coloration to it, a little bit of striation of like the yellows and the whites over there. Uh, got some more yellows and whites behind me. But uh, having a lot of this color that's just very warm out here, this cool colored uh, pool, and then this big uh, neutrally colored obelisk where it has these big open windows with little bits of color inside, it is very picturesque. I w I've never thought I would say that about a modern house, but it is very, very picturesque. Uh, very, I don't want to say idyllic because that's not quite the right word, but it is idyllic adjacent. Adjacent? Adjacent. I'm sorry. Idyllic adjacent is what I'm trying to say. And as we come into what I'm assuming is the living room or den, I uh, don't actually see a TV. So it looks like we've got just the sitting area here as the main focus. And we've got like a couple of uh, uh, speakers here with... Uh, looks like they've stacked up two of the head units on top of each other to make it look like a more impressive stereo. Uh, very nice effect, by the way. I didn't even notice it at first until I looked a little bit closer. Um, have the little uh, beige Carolina blue. Uh, looks like an ultramarine. Uh, yeah, just got a little bit of a coloration here that's uh, kind of working. Got the ultramarine. I guess that's not really ultramarine. It actually looks like a purple. Yeah, that's a purple. Huh. I guess because it was right there against the blue, I thought it was uh, just a deeper blue. That might be something uh, that could be looked into. Having that dark of a color, probably a red to go with these uh, over here, probably worked, would have worked a little bit better. But I see the effect they were going for. They were looking for like calming and soothing as the option over here. And using the wood stove over here, I'm not exactly certain um, that that's the correct effect we're going for. But I will give them credit. And this is something that frustrates me as well. I have to say this. I would very much like to see more options for fireplaces and uh, fire devices because a lot of times when this is your only option, it's not the correct option. <laughs> just have to put that out there. So I see up here, just like I was mentioning previously, there are the, uh, where's the light switch? I can't find a light switch. Is this it? Yes. So we have the exposed um, struts, uh, joists. Uh, I'm not exactly certain how you would classify these because they aren't really beams necessarily they are joists but they are very shallow for being joists i guess maybe the, the easiest way to put this is because it's a too tall um ceiling in here that's going up to the second uh, story floor i guess it would just be joists that are full height like the the full height and only half of them are showing down below that's the only real solution that i would have to say is going on there 
have the nice little cabinets over here with some boxes and vases in them. Uh, vases, vases, however you want to say it. Oh, that's... I didn't... What D is this? This one is a step down. I didn't even notice that. Look at that. Look at that. I didn't even notice. Okay. So then if that's the case, then yeah, they got the uh, uh, little ramp going down. Uh, that's a little bit strange, honestly. I... Hmm, that's a hard one. I would have rather seen this just be a step down. Let this be uh, level and actually have like an entire foyer right here. You know, with a, like an entire coat rack, uh, like a side table here next to the door, and like with an umbrella stand, maybe like a coat rack, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a hat rack over here with like a little stool and a shoe stand and like a hat rack, or I'm sorry, I keep saying it wrong. Hat rack over here with a little stool, table next to the door, a uh, little shoe rack inside of the stool, and then a coat rack and mirror like over here. I feel like that would have been a much better use of the space. I see what they were trying to go for here, but it doesn't quite feel right because this table is round and the space is not. There's like nothing round in this space that really makes it work. It's almost like it's trying to fight the geometry. That's what it feels like to me. Wow, wrapping this whole wall with uh, these these cabinets. They've got something in every single one of them. Uh, once again, I applaud anyone that takes the time to do this sort of thing. This is actually considerably more difficult than it looks, getting all of them exactly right. Nothing in the fridge, though. You lost points for that one. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I would never deduct points for not putting anything in the, in the fridge, because, again, like I said with the cabinets, it's far more tedious than it ever should be. So absolutely, I, I don't begrudge somebody to put stuff, uh, stuff in the fridge. It's a cool idea when someone does. But here we see the inside of those big, big windows. And I love the way that they've done this. Um, this right here, we're having the stove right next to that window. I would rather have seen the stove over here. Uh, in building code, you actually can't put a uh, stove or any kind of severe heat generating device like this this close to windows and the reason is uh the silicon that holds the windows in place um it has the ability to melt or possibly even uh burn in some cases depending on what type of silicon you're using but generally you don't want to have something that that can get up to this hot this close to a window because it can call the glass to fall out or cause the glass to shatter break uh, things like uh, things of that nature. Usually, induction tops are kind of considered okay because the only thing you're really going to worry about getting to the window is just steam. Uh, but even then, uh, a range hood like this would take care of that. So even though I would prefer to see it over here, I will say that I'm not going to move it in this particular case because I'm just going to assume that these are induction tops and I'm just going to leave it as is. And we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna make the assumption, <laughs> and, <laughs> and and I'm just gonna turn a blind eye. And I'm just gonna say, nope, that's a yeah, that's an induction top, all right. Never seen no, anything uh, even close to that. Uh, that is an induction top. I don't know what you're talking about. It's, a, you know, it's what it is. So here we are in the bedroom. I think I saw this was only a one bedroom house. So oh, we got some more geometricity in here. Um, this is only a one bedroom house, so this will be the only bedroom. Uh, I have the exposed joists up here as well. And uh, yeah, it's actually kind of, I apologize for saying this, but it's kind of bland. Um, yeah, you got the blues. You have this, uh, this wonderful little purple that goes really well with it. Again, I thought it was just a darker blue because it was next to that blue. And that's what it looks like when you're, when you're just standing here looking at it like this, especially against the black. Um, I do love this black wall. Oh, that's tile. Or that's the uh, the stacked block. I thought that was plaster. Hmm. Well, I guess I don't know this game as well. I thought of it. No, I'm kidding. It's because uh, these paintings make it look like the plaster. Because I'm attributing the texture here to this visually. Which, honestly, that's actually a pretty cool idea. Uh, the way that these paintings work, because they have this nice plaster-like texture in their uh, their squeegeed uh, ink, you attribute that 
to the wall around it and it makes the wall look like plaster even though it's very clearly just very dark graphite block like just stone block um but this over here i hate to say it but i really wish that these had more color to them the white does fit the modern aesthetic but i would rather have seen i would rather have seen the color in taking the place of the white and just put the white into the accents because it makes this wall especially look very very bland even with like the little color uh, splotches that you have here and, and the chair over here, this wall just looks so boring. <laughs> and I hate that I have to say it that way. I don't mind this as much because the yellow does make it stand out and the red has like a little bit of pop on either side of the bed. But uh, yeah, I definitely need to make sure that we have something a little bit more, have something that stands out on this wall. Even if we added just like a little decoration like over here or over here, something on this wall that can help it stand out against itself because it's just all white. It looks like it's all meant to just blend in together and not really have anything cool to look at. And when the TV is the focal point of your wall, you have to accent it. You have to do something that makes it feel like it's meant to be the uh, focal point of your wall. Those are interesting. I'm going to have to have a look at those to see how th that was done. <laughs> okay, and then the bathroom, we're kind of continuing the same color scheme. But in here, it's not as bad because we have the cabinets against this uh, graphite um, raw, raw stone wall. So... It doesn't have anything that makes it disappear into the wall like that. Over here, because the cabinets are, re are recessed, they're meant to be part of the wall. Like, they're meant to look like they're part of the wall. So it's okay for it to blend in and then just have whatever it's holding be the uh, focal point. Of course, in here we have what looks like uh, just like a little seat, I'm guessing. And then we have the, uh, the shower over here, of course. Uh, I'm not sure about the purple on this a little bit strange i mean i guess it works it doesn't really bother anything it's just kind of strange to put paint on your on the metal like this huh. i guess it really kind of just the problem I'm having with it really is that it goes against the uh, aesthetics that you would want in a house like this at least currently it could be that I'm just creating a, a scenario in my head because there's not really a problem with it the more I think about it. Why are there two doors that go into this room? That's a little bit strange. But anyway, um, yeah, I think I'm just creating a scenario in my head where that doesn't work, but it, honestly, it's fine. Like just having painted metal in your bathroom, I guess is, there's not a problem with it. So we have like a little exercise area here, a couple of yoga mats and a uh, exercise bike, some ladders, that kind of thing. And over here, oh, it looks like a game room and a, uh, no, it's like a recording studio game room kind of thing. I'm not quite sure why there's four computers and only two monitors. Uh, oh, I see the four TVs there now that I kind of look at that side, but it's not the best way to go about it <laughs> uh lots of guitars uh, i'm gonna guess that whoever made this house probably does music in some uh form or fashion i mean i don't have any evidence of that or anything like that you know just it was just a thought maybe they do kind of music or maybe they're into music or uh who knows maybe they're a big time youtuber and we'll never know Ugh. Oh, no. This is something that I have to force myself to avoid constantly. Having the same color of this uh, nice little wall clock, where having the same color of the digits as the wall behind it. This, I'm going to have to say, like, you absolutely need to change the, uh, change the styling. So it looks like you've got it as sandblasted steel the problem is that when you do like those hyper reflective colors like that 
it, they take directly from the area around them, like this area right, right like here. And like even if we come all the way over here, it's still not picking up hardly anything because it's trying to pick up. What the hell happened there? Oh, these are all slanted. Huh, I didn't even notice that until just now. But anyway. Yeah, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to go to Coated Metal. I'm just going to pull it down to like this. And I'm pretty sure that was the effect we were trying to go for. And I respect this very much. Because this, you can see from like all the way over uh, on the other side of the room without any issue whatsoever. But the way it was previously with that reflective uh, sandblasted surface, it was just picking up the black and like pretty much nothing else. And it looked like part of the wall. <laughs> just And I'm not talking about in a good way, like aesthetically. I'm talking about actually looked like it was just a couple of hands on the wall and like you couldn't tell which way was which. But anyway, uh, yeah, doing it that way is much better. Doing it with the uh, coated metal. Got the little bit of color here. I would have liked to have seen these be a uh, more color being added to the room. And I see that this is a lower quality picture than some of the, the other ones. So I'm actually gonna change these because I wanna Let's see. I saw these being used somewhere else, so I'm not gonna use those. Let's actually use a couple of these built-in ones that I've uh, used before. There we go. See, having the brighter, more vibrant green lends into the snake plant over there, and it uh, just kind of makes it a little bit brighter in this room. Just a little bit. Even if only visually, it's... Sometimes it's the, uh, it's the small things that make a difference. It really is. So one thing I will say is that there is a one major problem here, and that is that there's no sound dampening here whatsoever. And having glass over here and big glass panes right here, big glass panes over here. <laughs> Your record quality would be in the dumpster. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's what you like. You know what? You got plenty of equipment here. Surely you can filter some of it out. But, oh, man. I could, I could only imagine... <laughs> I can only imagine how muddy that output would be and how frustrating it would be trying to, uh, you know, do something about it that's you're not going to do anything about it. It's just there. So anyway, let's stop fussing about this over here. Let's go over and, yeah, there's just a little pool table in here by itself. Nothing really special. I'm not sure what the point of the pool, of the, uh, the these chairs over here are. I guess that's okay because it looks like they kind of ran out of room. Uh, it seems like something they wanted to do, but kind of didn't have the full space to do it. I'm going to guess, oh, look at that. They remembered to put in a fuse box. I like it. And of course, you know, standard laundry room. They've got a full counter going all the way across. Uh, absolutely like that. Uh, you know, actually, I'm kind of curious. How did they do that? Okay, so that is one piece. Looks like it's just a shelf that they changed the size on. Good, because it looked like it was like a multiple pieces, and I was about to throw a fit about it. <laughs> and yeah, that's kind of what I thought. A little bit, a little half bath in here, and this one I don't mind as much because it's it's solid black. So all the uh, all the white and the purple don't really lose themselves in the wall. Yeah, it's just that one wall in in the bedroom. Honestly, like, there's a few different ways that, that you could fix it. Because I have seen that they're still using, like, the purple, and they're using the white and the black. They're trying to be very contemporary with, like, a little bit of color here and there. But even so much as, like, taking this texture and applying it to this wall, like, that is really all you need. Like, let, let, me, actually, let me actually do it, and I'll show you what I mean. Because I'm actually going to leave this uh, list as it is. So we're just going to grab... I'm just going to grab this and we're just going to go ahead and apply it to this wall. We'll do my best to not have to move anything.
there. That's what I mean. Right there. Exactly, exactly what I mean. Uh, yeah. Because the wall is no longer white, this cabinet lo no longer gets lost in the wall. This cabinet now seems like the actual uh, focal point of this wall that you want it to be rather than it just being the TV. That's all I meant, is like just playing with the colors or using materials in different ways. And I understand that they were trying to use that wall as like the focal point along this side, but doing it as a corridor like this is not a crime. Like, absolutely, you can have two focal points because you can't look at this side and this side at the same time. Like, you know, you can kind of get it like this, but then you're still looking at this wall to make it a focal point. That's that wall's focal point, that big window. And, of course, the uh, the double doors uh, act as the focal point on the other side because this side doesn't really matter. You could put, like, a painting or something right here. Uh, in fact, let me see if we have one that's going to be worth using and we'll go ahead. Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to steal an idea that I've used before. Let's see. What was I looking for? Decorations. That's it. And then we're going to be looking for wall decor. Oh, it's under pictures. Here we go. Picture frame. And we'll do ebony. A white mat. And we'll do one of these. We'll bring that down to like a 32. One size in for the mat. There we go. Just a little tiny extra that really makes that wall sing. That's all it really needs. The rest of the house I didn't really have too much trouble with. It just seemed like the there was like a little bit of an issue with getting that uh, that bedroom to come together. This area right here, I see where their design choices came from, so I'm not going to invade on this one. But like I said, I would have done this a little bit differently. I'm going to uh, just leave that on the table. And of course, up here, uh, this room right here, I 100% agree with the freedom that went into the design of this particular room, especially with like the four TVs and like the, the big audio equipment set up and everything. Um, there's, there is absolutely a certain like whimsical freedom that went into this, this particular area. So I can't disagree with it too much, but it doesn't stop me from poking fun at it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Like you, you you would slam that base one time and go deaf because of these windows right here. Like, it would all just reverberate back into your bones. Uh, <laughs> this in here, there's not really much else you can say about this in here. And a lot of part of that... I'm going to actually just look at the slope of the roof. That's interesting. Anyway, yeah, there's not really much else you could say about this area in here. Uh, just because it does seem like they kind of ran out of room and didn't really know exactly what they wanted to do. Uh, or didn't plan on this particular room being here, something along those lines. So yeah, there's room all the way around the pool table to run the pool table, but uh, there's not really a lot of room in these corners, and I see that they wanted to have the chairs, so they chose the thinnest uh, chairs they were able to to get some chairs in there, uh, but the realistic truth is that it would have serviced that idea better, to swap this, uh, the workout zone with the pool table, have the pool table here so you have plenty of area around it for seating, uh, or even like kind of over in this direction with seating, uh, even along this wall, and uh, bring the exercise stuff kind of in here instead. Uh, I think it would have been better serviced that way, but uh, that's neither here nor there because I'm not going to take the time to do all that swapping. Uh, but as it is, it actually is a really cool design. Uh, there are, once again, I just have to put this out there. I'm not out here to jump down anybody's throat. I am just out here to say that this is actually a really cool mod. And I highly recommend bringing this up in your game. Just have a look at it. Uh, give it a gander. Find things that you like about it. And you know what? If you like things about it, then hmm, flattery is honestly, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> I goofed myself real good with that one. 
No, um, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. So if you see something that's in a design like this and you want to use it, then use it. You don't have to get anyone's permission. Like, you know, if the community wants to hound somebody for copying an idea, then you know what? Screw them. <laughs> if that part of the community wants to act that way, then then they probably need to drop off a cliff because there are some cool ideas out there and it doesn't really matter where the idea came from. What matters is that the idea is spawned, I guess is the best way I can put it. I would rather see a cool idea come out and be copied a thousand times than never come out at all because someone was too scared of it being copied. Uh, you know, as long as this house remains this house and nobody tries to copy this house or tries to copy this entire yard and then changes the house or something like that, you know, leave this person's ideas as this person's uh, ideas and uh, designs but borrow what you need because that's what happens in the real world you don't think architects are out here all innovating on absolutely everything they possibly could build no they're taking design elements that they've seen in magazines or other architects designs uh people who do landscape landscape architects uh they're taking design concepts from uh again from magazines or from other uh landscape artists that they've seen and every now and then someone will come up with a really cool idea but in the end it doesn't really matter who came up with the idea and what matters is is that the idea was out there so you know always make sure that when you come into somebody's mod uh you're not there to just copy and paste it into your mod you're there to kind of see what they did, see what worked well in your eyes and see what didn't work well in your eyes and make a judgment call for yourself. And that's a lot of what these videos are, are about are my style is my style. Their style is their style. There are things that I would have done different. There are some things that I can uh, not necessarily pass judgment on, but at least pass advice on if I see something that uh, could be done better, even if it wasn't just my style. If I say that, you know, the, this wall in here is just, it's very bland. But then if I just walk out and not say anything about how to fix it, then I, am, am I any better? You know, <laughs> it's a case of, see, look at this. Look how much better this is. Uh, but honestly, it's not really about that either. It's not about who's right, who's wrong. It's just about helping each other and helping the community get better. Because the better the community is, then the better mods will be there. So that's going to be it for this one. Have a good one, my dudes. Cheers.